America is waking up. The bad news is Washington is still sound asleep. <laughs> But our job, our job is to wake Washington up, make sure they hear our message. We can never accept the notion which exists today that the government can protect us against ourselves. Governments can't do that. Ron Paul on the stump over the weekend in Missouri. Joining us now, staff writer for The New Yorker, Kelly Fasane. In the new issue, he writes about Ron Paul's unique brand of libertarianism. Quote, last summer, John Stewart mocked cable news channels for pretending Ron Paul doesn't exist and asked, how did libertarian Ron Paul become the 13th floor in a hotel? The answer is embedded in the question. People don't think of Paul as a top-tier Republican candidate, partly because they think of him as a libertarian, anti-tax, anti-bailout, but also anti-war, anti-war. Empire and sometimes anti-Republican. Califa or K, good to see you this morning. Thanks, good to see you. So has Ron Paul broadened his base since 2008, the last time we saw him? Does he have more supporters? We know he's got the most passionate supporters. Well, clearly, Does he have more, though? Yeah, he's doing better state by state than he did four years ago. But I was really surprised when I went to his rallies. I figured, you know, after the Tea Party, after what happened in 2010, he was going to be really a little more in sync with the Republican Party. And he was going to be out there and he was going to be blasting Obamacare and he was going to be blasting bailouts, et cetera, et cetera. And so when I went to see him, I was surprised that to really see viscerally how far he still was from the mainstream of the Republican Party. And he gets on the stump and he talks about, we've got to end the wars, we've got to legalize drugs, we've got to cut $1 trillion right now. I mean, his message is really sharply different from what other candidates are saying, even now, even post Tea Party. Is there any sense that he's attempted or gotten advice that he ought to attempt to mainstream himself? Or is he so dedicated to his point of view? I mean, give him credit for that. He's been that at he's this, not going to do it. He's been at this essentially for 40 years. He's been at this since Nixon took the, you know, broke the link between the dollar and the gold standard. And so he's kind of used to being an outlier. He was an outlier when he was in Congress in the 70s and the 80s and 88 when he ran as a libertarian. He was even an outlier in the Libertarian Party. And then he comes back into the Republican Party. But he's he's used to not quite fitting in. And this is this is who his supporters are. I mean, his consistency is not only admirable, it's amazing in the country context of these political times that we live in. Does he not care at one level about, uh, you know, getting elected, I mean, on a national scale now? I mean, there are other issues he cares about more, and he cares more about the Federal Reserve and more about the gold standard and more about shrinking government and ending war, et cetera, than he cares necessarily about winning this thing or that thing. But I think also he realizes that, you know, if he gave up those things, that would be giving up what his appeal is in the first place. So I, you see bits of it from his campaign. In other words, you go to a Ron Paul rally, and there's a little brochure that says, Ron Paul is fighting to protect marriage. And, you know, you can clearly tell this is meant to appeal to some Republican voters. But then he gets on the stump, and he doesn't talk the same way his brochures look. So you get the feeling maybe there's some people in his campaign that think, hey, there's ways we could reach out to Republican voters. But when you put him in front of a microphone, you know, he wants to talk about how the dollar has lost 90-something percent of its value in 100 years. Those are the issues he really wants to focus on. It's clear, too, Mark, when he gets on the stage in a debate, he's not interested in being a member of the club. He talks about the issues the way he wants to talk about them, doesn't mind getting booed as he has been at a couple of these rallies. He's going to drive his message wherever he is. He is about issues, and yet presidential campaigns are more than just issues and position papers and pamphlets. Do you have a sense of him as a person, what he cares about, what motivates him, what he's like, what his personality is like? I mean, it, it's funny because, you know, you want there to be some Spider-Man-like origin story, right? And, and, you know, people say his parents talked about hyperinflation in the old country, and that kind of got him interested in reading Hayek and Mises and all this stuff. But he really does seem to be a person who's motivated primarily by these economic issues. Issues, and sometimes even seems uncomfortable when the conversation moves to culture or moves to other issues. This is really what he loves. So then, so then Khalifa, when you look at the movement of Ron Paul, mm -hmm. is it about Ron Paul or is it about the issues? And, and answering that as well, what does is, what is the bench look like? What is the libertarian bench right. after Ron mm -hmm. Paul? Well, and again, like I said, a lot of libertarians even disagree with him on certain things, on abortion or on immigration or on the gold standard. But I was always surprised when I talked to supporters at Ron Paul events 
they really bought in wholesale. You didn't come up to people the way you might talk to someone at New Gingrich events and they might say, oh, I agree with Gingrich on this, but not so much on that. I expected to see people saying, oh, he's, Ron Paul is great on the budget, but I don't know about foreign policy. They were with him kind of across the board. And it is, in some sense, a kind of a quirky group of positions. So there's not an obvious other person that they would go for. Some of his fans are also fans of, say, Alex Jones. You talk to people who voted for Obama, and now they've, they've kind of changed their mind. But again and again, his supporters would say, he's the only politician I really care about, with the possible exception of the senator from Kentucky, his son, Rand Paul. And there has been, over the last couple of months, the specter, the possibility of Ron Paul running as a third-party candidate right. and really gunking up this race. Well, Based on your reporting, what's the likelihood that he does that? Well, what happened in 2008 was super awkward. He has this press conference with four independent candidates. One of them, Bob Barr, doesn't show up to the press conference, so there's only three candidates. And then the last minute he endorses Chuck Baldwin from the Constitution Party and it's kind of all mixed up and I'm sure he wants a slightly smoother end game this time. The question is does he run independent? Does he not do that in order to try and uh, preserve a future for his son Rand Paul? Um, does he end up somehow endorsing Romney? People have talked about a strategic alliance between him and Romney similar in a way to what Buchanan had with Dole in, uh, 2000, in 1996 against Graham and, and that maybe somehow if Romney Romney gets it, they could work something out where he might be able to endorse Romney, even though his own supporters would flip out. Mark, what's your sense of Rand Paul's future with, in relation to his father? I think he's got a bigger future if he wants to be a national player. Um, his personality, I think, is more accessible to people as much as Ron Paul has this following, uh, including and especially amongst young people. I think Rand Paul has got a, a, a more accessible personality, and I think he is, he's a great politician. He's a, he understands the public mood, and he's got the same sort of list of principled positions. So I think Rand Paul will be a player, at least in the Senate. And I think if he decides to run for president, he will have at least as much success and maybe more as his father. Do you then, think Go ahead. Well, do you think it's possible that someone like Santorum or Romney could make the sort of overture to Ron Paul's followers that will allow them to get some of that support? Some, but not, not all that much. I think a lot of them will sit out. And you don't buy into the conventional wisdom that he won't run as a third party to hurt his son, Rand. That's exactly right, Willie. I don't. I, I think Rand Paul's future path does not rely on uh, appeasing the establishment interests who might freak out if his father got in as a, an independent candidate. All right, Kelifa, thanks so much. Thank you. It's a great piece, worth a read. It's in the new issue of The New Yorker. Good to have you here. Good to be here. Coming up.